Life Cycle 101. In today's episode, we're going to talk about flowed forms. So we have our sample form that we've created, and it's a form letter. And the intention here is to allow somebody to type a form letter out, and that form letter grow and expand as big as the end user needs it to. But in its current state, it does not do that. And that is because our main design page object here is set to positioned and we want to make it flowed which is the other option flowed of course once you do that once you change something from position to flowed it causes things to happen on your form uh, as you notice there so if I undo that and I go back and do it again notice how things jumped around and moved and expanded a little bit and many times I get questions from people and the most common question I get is I can't get my form to flow and when I try to change it to flowed everything gets jumbled up and I want to explain why that is and how to how to think past it it is a feature not a bug but uh, to some people it creates a lot of havoc in their head because they don't understand what's happening so before we do that let's just start from what you have let's do a preview of this form right now and point out some interesting things. So on this form we have places to type. And we have some text in here. But let's imagine I keep typing on this text. I keep adding and then I hit tab to go away. Notice how the stuff I typed is now included but the the object, the paragraph object, the text field is now overlapping the sincerely and the signature field. And if I were to keep typing and keep adding character turns and expanding, my object does expand but expands over top of everything else. In other words, the things below it don't move down and the same would happen if I did that up here. If I kept going, see how now it's, it's superimposed over top of each other. And that's because we have our form set to positioned here. And if we change it to flow, notice like the gap between this subform and that object, and then notice what happens to this object right here when I change from position to flowed. So immediately things line up top to bottom based on hierarchy. So we have the header on top, then we have txt client, label client, txt address, txt dear, txt paragraph, and then subform footer. The things inside of subform footer didn't move, and the things inside subform header didn't move. And the reason that is is because those two objects are still set to positioned. If we change those to float as well, watch what happens. They line up as well we're going to undo that because we don't want that. And so the way we create this effect of a flowed form letter while maintaining some relative positions in our header and footer is that we create subforms nested inside of a flowed main form. And I'm calling this the main form, you can call it the design form, whatever you want to call it. It's just a page object as opposed to a master page object. It's a design page object. That's what I call it. So notice the main page is flowed, but the subform header is positioned. The subform footer is positioned. So what do these two terms mean? The basic definition is if something is flowed, it uses the hierarchy to organize. If something is positioned, it uses the XY coordinates to organize. So each object under the layout tab has in a position container has an X Y coordinate but objects outside of a position container in a flow container the X Y is grayed out and erased now if I change the main back to positioned and I went back to client and looked at the layout now it has an X Y position so basically flowed means ignore X Y positioning and use the hierarchy order top to bottom to decide where objects are placed like this. 
and of course there's a flow direction now setting here top to bottom what that means is no matter what the size of the object is place hierarchical in hierarchical order top to bottom meaning client is here then the next item is labeled client then text address even though there's room for LBL client right beside text client so now flow direction top to bottom can be changed though it can go to Western text which is just another way of saying left to right in in the West in Western languages we read left to right in the East languages like Hebrew or Arabic read right to left and when we do this we change it to Western text now all of a sudden it says oh okay there's room for LBL client beside TXT client so I'll put it up there it's reading left to right Western text however if I make this object a little bit bigger so that it can't fit to the to the right of it it will go ahead and make it in hierarchical order so that is a big key if only everybody who watched this video could just understand this concept, uh, Lifecycle would just open up to you. It would, be, it would be an open book, and things could really happen powerfully. All right, so I'm, I'm going to save form letter sample 2 in the flowed context now, and now we'll preview it and see what happens. Okay, I'll put my name here. I'll put my address here. I'll just copy this address and paste it for speed. That grew and everything pushed down. I'll say, Dear YouTuber. And then now I'll just take some of this and copy and paste it again just to create more text. And voila. Everything pushes down, everything flows. And that's the real power of dynamic forms. If you can't harness this then you might as well just use Adobe Acrobat fillable forms that are static. Dynamic means as as need be the form changes. It grows, it shrinks. So let's take away some of the text and back up. Now sincerely after we hit tab we'll move back up. It grows and shrinks based on need. This is the power of Adobe Lifecycle. And if you're not using this feature, Adobe Lifecycle really isn't isn't a necessary tool for you. This is the the, the feature of this tool that makes things uh, makes this software worthwhile. So now let's talk about a few things that are happening, just so you understand. Uh, expand to fit and allow multiple lines. Remember this from the last video, TXT paragraph. We had checked this box, allow multiple lines, and we had checked checked this box under height, expand to fit. If we don't do that, if we take that off, this text field now is allowed multiple lines like you see, but if somebody starts to type more under that word laborum, it won't grow anymore. It won't expand. The text will still be there, but it won't expand. Let me demonstrate. So we're going to add a little text here now. And again, it's accepting that. But when I hit tab and go away, it freezes this object at the size it is at runtime, and then it gives you this little black plus sign here. And that's basically telling you, hey, there's more text I can't show you. And the reason it can't show you is because we didn't allow it to show, because we didn't check expand to fit. So that's what it means to expand to fit. The, the field is allowed to expand height wise up and down wise if we chose expand to fit width wise then see how that creates this unvisible width out to the right we don't want that most of the time width expand to fit is not used the only time you might use it on this form is for maybe the endorsement field if you needed this to grow uh, this direction the problem is if you if you give give an inch somebody might take a mile in other words somebody might start typing and go off to the right ad nauseum and that could create a problem off the page. Let's demonstrate that real quick. So I'm just going to take some of this text and paste it in here to save myself from typing. So see how now the, the, the field has expanded off the right side of the page. And so you have to be careful in positioned subforms 
with thing with the width expand to fit because the width is a limited fixed thing in in the master page so it can't go any wider whereas the height is not fixed it can go all day down and so in this if you wanted people to to type all day you could create the width of the whole entire subform and then say expand to fit again this is not a good example because we're in a position subform here it would be better to drag this out of the position subform like so put it on the main page at the bottom underneath the subform and then take the subform and make it a little smaller and so now your endorsement field could go on forever up and down if we chose height there and allow multiple lines there alright so I hope this helps if you need to rewatch this video a number of times to get the concept or ask questions please do because this concept is very important without understanding this concept you cannot make good dynamic forms alright in the next video we'll get into some things like tables inside of growing forms like this expanding tables and then I'll move into some more some more advanced features and, and ways to make this to leverage this kind of thing